Yeah. I went. Fine, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Did you get any time off? Did you get away? Uh, we had a couple of days. Yeah. Didn't get too far. Are you waiting for a drink or are you? Or are you no, no, I'll have it after. Happy Christmas. Nice. I suppose I told you about our couple of generals that we want to throw you away. Just yes. Good. Um, so the first one I think is kind of the perfect man to talk about it though. It's the age old club versus country debate that's been raging really around Raheem Sterling, I think, and this two day recovery period and all the rest of it. Um, what you've seen from both sides. What, what do you mm. make of that? Do, do, do players need two days? To um, again? I, th I think it's more to do with the knowledge that you have of your your players that you work with day in day out, and and different players have different capacities to to recover from the exertion of playing football matches. And uh, I think the key is that that knowledge enables you to make decisions based on what they can cope with and. On whether or not the workload's going to compromise them and, and put them at risk, and it's it's all about mitigating the risk. Um, so if a player in your care needs those two days rest, then that's what you you need to give them, so that they're available for you when you need them on a match day. So it's about knowing the individual and and knowing the group that you have. Um, if you have that knowledge, then you use it to to your best ability, which means. Uh, you protect them when you can, but obviously they still need work. They still need um, quality instruction, um, but they need to be ready and, and available for match days, and that's the key to it. So, uh, if you've got a player that needs that extra time to to recover, then so be it. I guess with Raheem Sterling and Chambers and Wiltshire and Oxley Chamberlain, the, the issue there for them is that clearly Karasaka would like them to play for the under 21s in the, in the European mm. Championship next summer. They've just been to the World Cup last summer. They're probably going to the Euros the following summer. As a club manager, would you have concerns about them going to the Under-21s Championship because they wouldn't have a summer off? Well, you do worry as a club manager that um, players, certainly if they're playing well into uh, mid-June, which more often than not they, they do, even if there isn't major tournaments, um, because invariably associations will um, arrange friendlies right into those those days in June, so um, there is a concern because I think this this year obviously we we won't have that much of a break, so it'll be uh, even less time to recover. And a long hard season um, is difficult to to get through uh, unscathed, and and you do need recovery time. It's it's a given, but um, you can see the the argument for obviously allowing the best players to to go to tournaments, and I think there's a feeling. Um, that certainly England haven't given themselves the best chance because the best players available at that age group haven't been available or, or didn't make themselves available. So um, I think it, it needs discussion. It needs uh, people to uh, discuss the merits of it. Um, probably not now, probably nearer the time uh, because then you can make a more uh, valued decision on 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 the situation leading into a tournament. At the moment there's a lot of discussion and the rights and wrongs of whether or not the players should be released or should make themselves available, but um, you probably need to wait until uh, a couple of weeks, two or three weeks prior to the tournament to see uh, what state the players are in after a long hard season. Thanks for doing that. The other one, I don't know if you read Roy Keane's autobiography, have you? Yeah. No, no. no and surprising. <laughs> but you'll, you'll have seen that he's, he's had a pop at Sir Alex Ferguson, said he wasn't a good man manager. And he's also criticised one of your players, Stephen Ireland, for not making himself available for, for the Republic of Ireland for so long since 2007. Do you have a view on either of those? And, and a former teammate of yours, of course, who's, who's, who's ruffled a few feathers. Well, yeah, Roy uh, has his motives to, to do that. He's, he's within his rights. He's, he's very forthright, always has been as a, as a man and as a player. So um, he, he obviously felt the need to to put certain things straight in his own mind and and make people aware of, of his view and he's totally at liberty to do that. But uh, um, I've got really got a view on it because I haven't read, read the book so I don't really know um, too much about what, what you're asking me. But um, I'm sure it's a good read and I'm sure a lot of people will be buying it for Christmas. <laughs> Diplomatically answered, thank you. Let's get on down the team news for us because, I mean, look, Juve, Whelan, 
Moses, Arnautovic, all of them have been struggling a little bit. Where are we at with, with, with M4 in particular, Rob? Um, Victor and Mam should should be okay. Uh, they've trained uh, for a couple of days and haven't had a reaction today. So we're hopeful uh, that will continue tomorrow so they'll be available. Um, we've got a big worry over Glenn Whelan, unfortunately. Uh, he had to come off in the, the international and uh, uh, he's going for scans today just to really get uh, a real understanding of what's going on. He had a big bang on, on his leg and then he's in a lot of pain at the moment. So. Uh, we need to get to the bottom of that, so he'll be having scans today. Whereabouts? Uh, on the outside of, of the knee. So um, we'll have to wait until we get an indication about what's going on there. Um, Robert Huth uh, has got a, a problem with his, with his calf, which uh, is compromising him at the moment, so uh, he's, he's probably a doubt as well. Um, apart from that, um, Marco, Marco got a real bang on, on his hip, um, it's, there's a lot of bruising around, around the area so he's a little bit restricted in his movements but um, um, obviously the, the more time he has and the more work he does to, to relieve that then, then he should be okay but um, apart from that I think that's everybody. Um, how did you approach your game against Swansea then? Um, They've not had a great time for themselves, I think, no in the last four from, from them. You're at home where it hasn't been the fortress I know you'd like it to be. But with the games you've got coming up... We've only played three games. Well, it, it is. We won one of them. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. That's a very fair point. Um, but is this a game you need to be looking to try and win? Or is that too simple? Yeah, we, we, we look to win every home game, obviously. We, we played really well against Newcastle. I felt 1-0. Uh, our win was was very welcome. I thought we were better than that on the day. We could we could have won by uh, a bigger margin. I think that's been the story of our, our season in terms of the amount of chances that we've been creating in games. Uh, notwithstanding Sunderland, where we had a lot of possession but didn't really create as much as we would have liked and, and got done with. with probably their their only strikes on goal, and that's happened a couple of times in in home games. Certainly, Leicester game and, and Aston Villa, uh, opposition who didn't really create too many clear good chances but the ones they did were converted so that's been a frustration for us so I think from our point of view we, we're looking to be nice and solid um, certainly take the game to Swansea um, they're a good team they play in the same way have done for, for many many years and uh, that's continuing um, obviously since Gary's uh, become manager um, and they had a great start to the season obviously he helps had a win in the last few games, so uh, they'll be looking to address that. But uh, we had two really good games against them last year. Um, no one came out on top. 2-2 um, two -two down there and another draw here. So um, it'll be close, but, but I feel um, uh, given our, our display uh, in the game against Newcastle last time out here, uh, I think that will help us and uh, give us confidence to, to hopefully take the game away from them. Two teams that play football as well. Could be quite a, an open game, couldn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think um, obviously as the home team, you know, the onus is on, on us to, to take the game to them. Uh, they have got pace on the break, obviously in, in wide areas, they, they, they can hurt you if you're you know, obviously not conscientious and you, and you defend and you get your numbers right at the back when you're attacking. Um, so they have got threats, so um, we're mindful of that, but um, I think it's the onus is on us as the home team to, to really take the game to Swansea and um, hopefully get our noses in front to score score early if we can um, and then see how the game pans out. Um, Andy Wilkinson said to us in the international break that he's, he's disappointed he'd like to play more first team football in the standard yard. I'm sure he can appreciate that but he thinks he might have to leave the club to get that. Um, not nice you to hear from, from a manager's perspective but you can understand his, his realism. What, what would you say about his, his role within the squad and, and how much you'd value him to stay? Well we will He's got great value to, to the squad and um, I have disappointed him obviously because I'm giving him enough opportunities or I'm being able to give him enough opportunities because there's, there's people ahead of him so I can understand his frustration. I think we, we've come to a point where I think we, we're all agreed he, he probably needs to, to at least look to, to get some game time somewhere. Uh, that, that means a, a loan situation if we can find the right club and, um, and, it, and it feels right for Andy as well. Um, He's been a great servant here and uh, continues to be a great servant. Always makes himself available, always trains well um, and great to have around the place. But I think for his own his own football career,
career, he needs just to get some games under his belt this year because the likelihood is that I'm, I'm not likely to be able to give him too much game time in the next month or so. So if we can find the right club, um, I think uh, he'd be good, a good option for, for a club. Uh, you begin a, a good professional and, and a guy that will give everything. And finally for me, the next three home games, Swansea, West Ham and Burnley, I don't mean any disrespect to, to any of those teams involved at all, but um, when you finished your ninth last season, would you look at that as a, as a fairly crucial period at home to try and re-establish that fortress Britannia? And well, we, uh, we look at every home game, obviously, to we, we, we back ourselves to, to win every home game uh, because obviously our record certainly last year was was exceptional at home. So, so we want that to, to continue and we've, we've made a start, obviously, uh, beating Newcastle last time out. We've got a period of games where uh, we're very hopeful of, of getting points on the board. Um, after those games that you mentioned, we, we go through a period where we we play a number of the teams right at the top of the Premier League, so uh, that will be a difficult uh, period for us, but we, we showed last year that we're, we're more than capable, and, and this year in fairness, uh, going to City. Uh, we have the capability of taking points off top teams in this league, so uh, uh, we, we just got to keep on, on going, do the right things and uh, get our performance levels at a consistent level, um, take our chances and, and win games as simple if you say quickly. Good man. thank you. Mark, there's been some uh, speculation about uh, Manchester United being interested in Ryan Shawcross. He came up through the ranks there. What are your thoughts on that, a possible bid for them? Well, I'm not sure where that originated from. Uh, I think someone told me he might have come from America at some point, but um, uh, th there's been no contact. I uh, don't expect there to be any. We wouldn't encourage anyway, any any contact anyway. So uh, Ryan is very settled here. He's, he's the captain of the club and uh, we have no intention of allowing him to leave. He's, he's a big part of what we want to do in the future. Uh, Mark, uh, Peter Crouch has been saying this week about how he hopes to stay on beyond the end of his contract and that there might be sort of talks, preliminary talks going on at the moment of that sort of nature. How, how keen are you for, for, for him to extend his deal? Yeah, we we've, we spoke briefly. Um, I think Peter is one of those players that he's quite unique in what he offers to, to us. Um, so you can see the attraction that other clubs have in terms of uh, maybe a desire to bring them to bring Peter to to their club. So uh, we we value Peter. We we certainly uh, would like him to stay if if we can come to some uh, some agreement because uh, he does give us a, a different type of threat. Um, and a threat that opposition teams find really difficult to cope with. <coughs> so um, we're, we're hopeful that uh, there'll be some com common ground and uh, we'll, we'll be able to progress it. It's still very, very early in discussion, to be perfectly honest. And obviously, Peter's in a quite a strong position in terms of he's going into his last year of his contract, but I sense that um, he's really happy here and he enjoys the work. That he gets, and uh, and he, he enjoys playing with the players that he has around him because I think uh, that's helping him to to really enjoy his work. So those things will be taken into account, I'm sure, when a decision's made. During the international break, there was uh, talks about the cost of, of watching football these mm. days, and some of your senior players were out in the community helping to engender the spirit of Stoke City. Seeing as you've been a manager for a while now at the football club, are you still surprised at how fervent our support is and our community spirit and, and do you need it to continue? Well, I, I think um, since I've come here, it's very evident that I've had an understanding of the, the passion of the area, obviously coming here as an opposition manager, and so I understood that, but until you actually get here and understand the, the, the standing of the club within the community, I think it's really important. I think every one of the the staff playing and support staff really understand uh, how privileged we are to, to work for this club and uh, and the standing that we have within the, uh, the surrounding community. So uh, we're forever trying to get out in the, in the community, community. The players do some, some great work. Sometimes it gets reported, sometimes not. But uh, um, they, they understand that it's a really important role that they have and uh, it's an obligation that they take on willingly because it's it's so important to the surrounding area. Mark, uh, Christmas is coming. I only mention it because uh, you've got a really tough run up to Christmas, which is sort of Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester United, and space for about 20 days or something like this. Mm -hmm. Will you be using the next few games against people like Swansea and, uh, and, and Burnley and West Ham as a preparation to build up to that uh, really tough run? 
Um, and I'll just be using the games as as a marker of our season. Really, I think it's every game we play, we're, we're trying to improve. We're trying to um, build on on the things that we work in during the season, and and obviously the the amount of work that we did last year, we want to bring that forward as well. So um, we're not looking too far ahead because you, you can't you can't afford to do that. But certainly we we've got a period of games where we can we certainly feel we can put good points on the board and, and then that sets us up in, in good heart for maybe on paper difficult fixtures that lie ahead of us but in saying that every every fixture in the Premier League is, is mightily difficult so uh, uh, we'll face the, the obstacles as, as they arrive. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Was it? No, it wasn't me. <laughs>